I've got combat. I can fight shadowy figures. I can talk. I, I have wit. That's all I am. I have wit and fight. Okay. Uh, Someone needs to go buy a love potion. I'll, I'll go buy a love potion. I got all this money on me. <laughs> um, I'll... And I'll pretend you gave me all your money. No, no. I mean, uh, this is pooled. We always yeah, have access to this. Good. Yeah. Remember that's 15. <laughs> this is 15. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go here. Probably kill somebody. Probably not. I'll go to the opposite side and see if I can't kill people. Draft mechanic. Spoiler episode Omega. If you haven't already guessed, this episode of Draft Mechanic will contain complete spoilers for the Time Stories scenario Madame, as well as the entirety of The White Cycle, the first nine scenarios of Time Stories. If you don't want to be spoiled, I encourage you to tune out of this episode. Otherwise, we'll be picking up in media res as Team Beta finishes out their run, their final run of Madame. Before we get into it, I want to thank you all for joining us as we've done these spoiler episodes over the last three years. I really appreciate the feedback we've had for them, and I'm hoping that as we roll into the blue cycle, we can find a new way to kind of pick apart and be interested and excited by what is going on in the time stories. This this scene is going to continue probably far into the future. Hopefully, they can find some cool ways to rework it as we move into the blue cycle, and when we do, we'll be there for you. But I want this to be a nice ending for the spoiler episode series that we've done thus far. You can obviously find us on the internet, draftmechanic.net, or at draftmechanic on your social media. And without any further ado, let's get right into it. Here we go. Well, we're going there together as a team. Uh, I'll let Signatory roars with laughter as he shit. We're just going to... Okay. It's something we all agree on. Yeah, all right. You recognize a limp. Uh, sitting at the end of the table, she smiles to a young suitor who tries to engage in her conversation. But it's clear that she is eager to be left alone. If your receptacle is from the moon, uh, turn this card upside <laughs> down you? And, read, and read on. Irresistibly attracted to a limp, you know you lose control of Eluan's receptacle, who is now passionately throwing himself at her at the feet of the young woman. Unfortunately, she remains unmoved and turns him down politely but firmly. If you have a low potion, you can try to use it. The group then gains access to Cardi. Hey. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's just gonna be another turn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, discreetly pours the love potion in uh, Olympe's glass and then raises his for a toast, but a cheerful noble, appearing quite intoxicated, bumps into Olympe, causing her to spill her drink all over the table. No! She raises her head speechless and finally notices uh, the dude. Their eyes meet and time stops. <gasps> time stops! <laughs> for <We're> done. <laughs> 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 I guess. <laughs> for the two sweethearts. Take item 60. Yay! Yay, it's the last one. Yep. Is this has been a love story all hey, along? Hey, we got the ring! Yay! Be prepared to be just fantastic. <laughs> Epilogue. Olymp and Eloan are devoted to one another and will announce their engagement in the coming weeks. Oh! The wedding will be celebrated with great pomp at the Clairval Estate. And of course, they will have many children and grandchildren, and great children, grandchildren, and many more descendants. But one of them is particularly of interest, and you know him pretty Mom. well. Look at mine. The temporal shift seems to have been caused by an event that may have prevented everyone in a limp r- to. <coughs> they wrote by one of them. Yeah, game. sorry, yeah. This is why you had to artificially recreate love at first sight between the two sweethearts. According to their retroactive analysis, the meeting would have initially occurred in the forest of near Versailles. From there, one could deduce that your own intervention prevented Eloan from... Back to the base, open the secret deck. We're not done. Um, uh, I mean, this deck said two of three. I didn't want to break anybody's heart, but it was right next to me the whole time. If you would, uh, you'll want to clear your board. That seems reasonable. (laughs) Even even these things? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Where is deck two? Deck two two was everything. This is all. Deck three is in the box now. Deck three is in my hand. Oh, okay. 
Jake's doing a thing. Drama. <laughs> Dan's doing some drama. I started organizing some of these. Oh, oh I guess there's an order. Secrets! I mean, I it. Here's 22, here's 21. Oh, you don't have to like, reorganize secrets, or anything right now. Don't worry about that. Fun. But I just wanted you to have enough space to lay this thing yeah. out. Am I still a witch? Only oh, you can you're not up. Okay. <laughs> there, I'm just going to I can start right now later. Return to the base. I hope, I hope Mike's okay. Put things out. Yeah, lay it out. <laughs> Mike. Bob just comes in and shoots Mike. <laughs> Mike. <laughs> What'd you do, Mike? It's a big base. The sound of cracking window... Uh, of a cracking window awakens you. You're in the Kazons, no doubt about it. But the usual appearance appearance of the transfer room has been replaced with an indescribable chaos. As you place your feet on the ground, you feel like you're floating above the base floor, as though someone had slightly adjusted the artificial gravity. Your path forward is punctuated by the creaking cracks stretching across the bay window. To your left, a badly damaged Kazon is still half open. Not far from it, Sam's carcass in its pre-mission state amidst odd sounds. Who's Sam? <laughs> Next to it, a control screen flickers red. In the middle of the room, a strange cube enshrouds a feminine silhouette that beckons you to approach. On the ground, you see another, more normal-looking copy of Sam's carcass. <clears throat> you can explore this base as a regular location, but you do not spend any time. That's nice. Uh, let's not go to the beckoning woman. Uh, God, that's a lot of spaces to go to. <coughs> you have five options. <clears throat> yeah. And there is no... And we don't spend time. Yeah, there is no more time that can. Right. Mm-hmm. Let's just go one by one, then. Experience together. together as a team. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not upset about that. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. You don't have to do that. Oh. You get closer to the camera, oh. open the lid, and horrific sight gives you chills. <laughs> the body of a man in his transfer outfit, his head blown to smithereens is still standing thanks to his security harness. You feel sick. Mm. Next! Would you like to read the Missing an important piece of data on that card. Uh, is it me? From the no. future? Recalfus... What was it? R. Calavicio? R. Calavicio. Urbici. Calavici. Oh. Which one's Calavici? Close the case. Uh, his name starts with an R. Oh, and gets shortened. Yeah. Oh, Bob. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I always thought it was Bobbert. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Bob um, said, anyway, we did all of that and he's still dead? But he exists at least. He needed to exist to Existed. die. Well, uh, you get closer <laughs> to Sam's. <laughs> you get closer to Sam's carcass, the robot that gave you instructions before you were transferred to Versailles. Uh, it is in a pitiful state and, the, and only a few sentence fragments reach your ear. Never. Mike is a temporal bug. Your mission was a mistake. The time hole. Is this? Is this? <laughs> Darn time hole. Did you I know yeah, everybody other, needs to see the other one. Just keep oh. one in a line. It feels like it needs to be in a line. I, who's, who's I mean, but let's skip the middle one. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I say we leave the, the beckoning woman for last at the very least. Okay. I mean, I'm saying we're going clockwise, and clockwise gets to choose. <laughs> um, here lies what remains of the Sam you knew from your missions. Given his condition, these words are unda- undoubtedly its last. Bob? Is that you, Bob? Run! I'm telling you! Shh! shh. Worthless helping them! Shh! Agents! Suck! <laughs> what? <laughs> I wish it was stuck. <laughs> Their mission is Shh, no, not in this saison. <laughs> anyway, that was that was, that was Sam. Man, this is getting dark. <laughs> I mean, I think it started <laughs> pretty started. dark. Man, right, right now it's getting dark. I mean, but we do know that Daniel Brooks wanted Bob to die, so <laughs> yeah, I'm just our, our faithful <laughs> robot companion, though. I'm just upset it wasn't me. <laughs> The control screen is overheating and it could implode at any moment, line after line of code, scrolling incessantly. What does the code say? Things 
fatal error system mm-hmm. something something. Alerto. The system will something something. I love Alerto. <laughs> <laughs> Abigail. No. Daniel Brooks, where you are you going next? Well, I'll go there, but if you guys want to look at that. Daniel Brooks, go back to square number two. <laughs> just to really look at, just to really look at Bob. <sighs> you enter the cube and have the odd sensation that you are crossing an elastic veil, stretching and giving way seconds later to absolute silence. The transfer room and its chaos have given way to a zone outside of time, a young woman staring at you from its center. I was expecting you, she says. She's not a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> She's French. <laughs> if you want to, hey, if you want to get closer, reveal card G. We were here, are we? Yeah, yeah, let's, let's, let's do it. What was the other option? Yeah, we all no, get the same. your just... other option <laughs> is, <laughs> is nothing. No. Okay. 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 You know what? Let's just... Let's just <laughs> get <laughs> on. You're asking G for ghost? <laughs> oh, that is an interesting card. It, it's totally you have been pulled out of yeah mm-hmm. yeah man she's got there's like cubes that go in there whoa yeah. <laughs> oh. we have two of the cubes we have oh, more yeah. cubes we technically don't have all of them yeah. okay this is a temporal bubble here we are protected from the time hole that will soon engulf the base <laughs> That's we horrible. must recover the agency's memory before we are telebra- teleported to a safe place I have the ninth cube you have the other eight don't you? <laughs> if you retrieved eight item cards with the cube during your adventures, reveal card H. Nope. No. Otherwise? You, otherwise, the end. Otherwise, cheat. This is where the game ends. Really? That is the end of That's the game. That's garbage. Because I think we got, what, two or three? I mean, we you just picked up one. Several. We have one. Mm-hmm. We, we had a, you I thought you had several, more than we but did. you did not have yeah. a We had a handful. Yeah. I was going to say, getting all of them would have been incredibly hard. Correct. Especially pretend, pretend you have eight. Because in Under the Mask, you have to play it twice to get both cubes. Oh. There are two cubes in Under the Mask. Oh, yeah. The Rosowskis each give you one of them. Oh. oh, wait, you have to play... You have to play it twice. Who the fuck would play it twice? How could you know. play it twice? I thought that I mean, was just, against the spirit of the game. Yeah. Anyhow. Anyway, it's time. Anyway. It's time to get to time. In case we decided that we just wanted to read this card anyway. Yep. Yeah. No, as you Is know. Is that how it says starts at the top? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, we, we noticed you're a cheater. <laughs> uh, you place each of the eight cubes recovered during your missions in the cavities. As if by magic, text seemingly engraved in the air appears before you. Take a cube and count the number of its lit squares. Repeat this process for each of the nine cubes. Reduce each number to a single digit, then sort the cubes in ascending order. One error to avoid, the prophecy cube displays one lit square too many, then flip them all. The small numbers constitute the code. Both cubes from under the mask must be sorted in the ascending order of their card. I do that. <laughs> so in short, we gave you a really cool puzzle. But we have part of it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, those instructions are so convoluted. Yeah. Uh, and, so, yeah. And then it says, solve this protocol, and we might just get out here alive. Uh, my cube has nine lit squares. As we begin our revolution, we have all we have left is hope. And then there's the little QR code. QR code. I do that. Uh, okay. I arrange the You are going to need a number, that number you have, I assume? Oh, yeah. Let me find this uh, 20-digit code. <laughs> well... Yeah, somebody who had the code put it on the internet. Yeah. yeah. Slight <laughs> step back. The value of my cube must be entered after the other eight. Good luck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this is the grand puzzle that n- no one completed, probably. So, I mean, somebody someone. must have. Yeah. Like somebody probably went back and found all the cubes yeah. and then did it. Yeah, because you have, yeah. you have to save the those the cards <clears throat> from they, every they single game. They stirred up the coding on the website as well. Mm. Nice. Mon- you know, monkeys, typewriters, somebody got it. <laughs> but yeah, that they, they had that. Jake's got that. I'm trying. Uh, I'm not getting any internet right now, and it sucks. Are you oh. on the Wi-Fi? Yes. Yeah, sorry, my Wi-Fi is on the other side of the house, and it doesn't like this room. Mm-hmm. It's a bad room. It's a bad room. Draft Mechanic is a proud member of Punchboard Media, where we all bring something to the table. Check out our website for more great board game content at punchboardmedia.com. Is that? No, you don't. You don't. Use like, like uh, they were meant to be burned to look at uh, deck six six six. Fucking knew it. <laughs> Did it load? Yeah. All right, Daniel. 
Oh, or Stephen, or Nathan. Nathan. <laughs> Everyone type this in. <laughs> and read it in unison. <laughs> 3 9 4 7 4 7 5 1 4 1 4 2 2 6 3 4 1 9 4 I'm assuming that in because just stop typing. Yep. Cool loading screen. That's so granted. That sounds like the right thing. Time stories revolution. The agency is no more, but the adventure continues in the summer of 2019. Figure out best. It's all over. Is that such a great right. name? <laughs> loading zero. There are two zero nine nine nt dash question 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 mark at. Thanks to you, the agency's ads have been saved. You are awarded the Medal of Honor. Finally. Each agent keeps an action die for their upcoming adventures of Time Stories Revolution, the Blue Cycle. Once a run, the agent can roll that dice before making a test. Then they apply the affecting uh, effect according to the result. One success. Anyway, one success. Uh, <laughs> They're right there. <laughs> And it's just a die. <laughs> you're not, the playing, looks you're like. not playing a game anymore. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, characteristic plus one for the test. Oh! Characteristic plus two for the test. Um, place the die on your receptacle, remove it to cancel an entire loss of Azrak after failing a test. No clue what that is. Yeah, we'll get that. Um, Health. No effect. <laughs> nah, that's what you got. Cool. Yay. So if you got all eight cubes. You get a die to bring forward into the further scenarios, which are not dice-based. Neat. Hmm. <laughs> or are they? No, they're not. <laughs> okay. But they're still success-based dice. Yeah. yeah. So we are sitting around at the end of Team Beta's run of Time Stories Light Cycle Finale, Madame, and I am going to call this. Spoiler episode Omega, because this this is the end of this cycle, and uh, oh boy, <laughs> that is ending some stuff. Um, did so, it end anything? Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> did it end your desire to ever play Time Stories again? I mean, it is going to be a new game, so I'll try a new game. Yeah. Yeah. But if it continued the story, I might not want to continue the story. Mm-hmm. So, because I don't feel like it finished what I was hoping to finish. Yeah. There was we were bu- with our teasers. Yeah, yeah, we were building yeah. this like whole two track things about like the scions and the agency, and none of that came about. Okay, so it's technically three tracks. Yeah, I guess <laughs> we, should, we should get this all out. You guys have been scion the whole time, yeah. Yes. yes. Okay, we have been uh, Eloise since Lumen Fiat, and. We both got the choice again in Brotherhood of the Coast. Mm-hmm. Um, I forced us towards Eloi because that's how my per- persistent effects kind of has pushed me in the game. Um, did you guys make any different choices in Brotherhood? We still felt very strongly mm-hmm. yeah, about okay. the Scions. <laughs> yeah. And uh, by the way, we didn't bother mentioning any of that in the final scenario of the White Cycle. Yeah. No, because the Scions and the Eloi all read the same card at the beginning, correct? Yeah, everybody, yeah. Um, the QR code that you got and the QR code that we got, ours led to a countdown clock mm. that mm. was till middle of February. And when I loaded it up, it literally took me to the page that you went to. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even like a different version yeah. of it. It just sent me to that page. Um, so like, Which both, was the thing I had Daniel read before the you guys half. read the yeah. item mm-hmm. gotcha. well, so. Yeah, so both, uh, both of those <laughs> things didn't bother to do anything at all. Well, the only mention that you see in this... Is the character that you ended up playing the very last run? The vampire? Who had a moon cycle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. His last name was. They don't like Eloi or something. We, we they, didn't pay yeah. attention. They did yeah. not exactly. do the thing I did where you <laughs> memorize 15 different French names. Yes, we <laughs> were quite bad about that, actually. Um, I mean, it's, it, there's implications that he is of that lineage or mm-hmm. progenitor of that mm-hmm. lineage. And which means Bob was Eloi. <gasps> which. You had no indication of at any point previous, I don't no, right. believe. There, so the the time agency debriefing stuff, if you punched in the codes and looked mm-hmm. at our stuff, yeah. felt d- dealt a lot with Bob. Yeah. Um, and did you guys ever read your 
debriefings on the the website. I think we plug the code yeah, in. Most of them, at least. Yeah. They yeah. were so far behind. I don't know how far, how many there ended up being. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, they never say that Bob is LOE, but they're always watching Bob mm-hmm. in our. I just uh, thought that was because he was the boss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> he was their prodigal son from their. Apparently. Literal yeah, Esther. Well, yeah, he literal wasn't son. prodigal, and we just never found out about it. <laughs> yeah. And they blew his head off. He's dead now, though. Yeah. Everything might kill him, right? <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, do you feel uh, vindicated that Bob is now dead? A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about Mike? Still love Mike. Can't, can't we, have Mike can back. Can we read, Sorry, Mike didn't read, exist. Read the, read the other yeah. mission success. You mean mission fail? It's it's only mission failures. Failures. Only failures. Yeah, yeah please yeah. read the last mission so fail. I want. That's what we wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Steven, you have the best mic voice. voice. This can be great. Oh, this was just a back. Is gadget. it Mike? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Right. We need we need a Daniel or Steven. I think it's Steven. All right, we're done here. The agency has wasted enough money on you. Get back to your cells, you halfwits. End of story. Mike shows you the door and leaves, but the tingling runs through your bodies, and you are transferred to Versailles in 1673. The game is entirely reset. Start the mission all over again. Reopen the base, then read card A, etc. It seems that you are stuck in a temporal loop. There must be a way to escape from it, right? You, you have to finish this game. <laughs> Can I get the location for the canal, please? The yeah. canal? Because yeah, you guys one. were very close to doing a thing, and if I remember correctly, you would have boned yourself. Yes, it was. It was a. It was. It would be quite the boner. Uh. You discarded from the game, correct? Oh, I don't know about from the oh, game. The I thought it was for this round. Um, I don't remember. Yeah, I think you have to go pick up the witch again. Yeah, gotcha. which was not an easy thing. Which is not an easy thing. I'm glad I pushed to not go back there. Yeah. So reading yeah. that final card there, kind of one of the things that I wanted to kind of center this around. There are a lot of there's like the illusion of choice throughout this entire thing because there's like three or four super, super tight bottlenecks Mm -hmm. in this scenario. Mm -hmm. Um, And this has happened once before with Prophecy of Dragons, Mm -hmm. the the water passage. Um, So talk about the bottlenecks, and let's make that the the thing we go to. I mean, it was pretty... Especially because everything was mission failed, mission failed, mission Mm -hmm. failed. It was very unrewarding. Um... And we kept thinking, similar to prophecy, that we might have different options. Yeah. And I am assuming there are not. No. There, so there is no other way to get through stuff other than getting yeah. a bunch of the fly symbol. The, the the flies. The only real indication that we had that the flies were important was Laura, which was very far down the line. I think that was when we took a break because we were so mm-hmm. frustrated yeah. and. We started hurrying through things and making bad decisions that yeah. just killed our time. And one of the things I had said to you, but since we didn't actually record a spoiler episode of our mm-hmm. own, um, when we, as Alpha, went through this, the, we got that card from Laura at a point when we still had a lot of options. Right. So it was less a firm direction and more a, here's an option if this is what you want to do. Right. And we had already not gotten the the son or the cousin or whoever it is you get from the salon. Mm-hmm. So we already had one of those brown demerit tokens. So we used Ooh. it for that mm-hmm. instead of the fly. Because we're like, okay, well, we have a bunch of other options. This game has always given us plenty of options. Mm-hmm. We just won't worry about that right now. It's not what we're working on. It's not what we're thinking mm-hmm. about. And you guys got it at a point where it made a little bit more sense. Yeah. So it was actually able to help you, but the fact that that varies so much is also a deal. We technically could have taken all those flies at that one round, but there was yes. something else that we really needed to do, or we, wanted to do. Uh, no, we, we, we ended up going down the um, soldier route in the Netherlands again, which right. ended up being a dead end. Yeah. It was interesting that this scenario had a lot of these little side worlds, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is something that, like, that's the thing that I really enjoyed about Estrella Drive, um, is that you have the the first section, then you go back in time to another section, uh, what was it, like, two-thirds of the way through the game, you go mm-hmm. back to the, the 60s. But mm-hmm. that was progress. Mm-hmm. This wasn't yeah. progress, this was cul-de-sacs. Yeah, it was exa- yeah. exactly that. And I think about um, Expedition Endurance, same kind of thing, the teaser, everything's super frozen, then you go back mm-hmm. to the actual yeah. boat. Um, and, like, I... I think the thing that hurts those sides the most is that you don't do anything. You're just it's just straight fetch quests on those side path things. Yeah. I think some of us got us some extra time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. was nice, but once we actually started getting it, 
it was less rare. Mm -hmm. and, and realistically, if you had needed extra time on that last run, you had two time beacons left you could have brought. Right. Mm -hmm. And also, the time didn't matter whatsoever in the end. Like, yeah. it was going in an in infinite loop, and our last the last little thing didn't use time whatsoever. Yeah. So we had built up, like the, the stability we were building up had absolutely no bearing on our end goal. Yeah. And honestly, sometimes, so we were frustrated about having no time at the beginning, but then later on we were frustrated about having time because we just needed to reset, which was kind of annoying. Yeah. Because once we could just hold everything, there was no point. I know, the, the, the fact that we only had four character options and a million different character options that would, that opened up different cul-de-sacs that we couldn't switch out on the fly. Yeah. And and they even had a game mechanic previously that would have let us do that with our little fly mask, thing. Which yeah. was fun. Mm -hmm. That was fun. It was really <laughs> fun. <laughs> oh, Dan, you've been oddly silent. How are you feeling about time stories again? Oh, well, besides having a sore throat. Um, no, I'm going to make you talk for the next hour. No, I... It, it, <laughs> you're a sexy jazz blues I, I was just trying to think um, what sacrifices the designers had to make to make this the last episode. Like, all of this infinite loop, go mm -hmm. play the game again, is just so that you see the ending. You see the proper ending. Yeah. Um, and that's you not... Did, you did infinite loop and got to that ending. If you didn't have the cubes, you literally had to play the entire Time yeah, Stories yeah. arc. Go, go back and play all of Time Stories until you get it right. <laughs> we gotcha. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's definitely... You're sacrificing something to aid the narrative, but there wouldn't be a way to write... To, to, to write like multiple endings that give you the same conclusion of mm -hmm. well, well, we're well, ending. What's, what's wrong with having we're, different endings? Well, I mean, because they're they're ending this cycle. The world ex is exploding, and the time cycle is exploding because mm -hmm. there's a time hole. Blah blah blah. Time is dead. Um, it's Marvel um, Universe. So we're having to start from the beginning again with a new cycle. Um, yeah, I, I guess you really could write different endings that still lead towards the same. I mean, video games do thing. it all the time. Where, like in, in the Knights of the Old Republic, like you have multiple ending paths, and then they say, "Hey, this one's going to be canon," but you can still have multiple things. There was also the possibility that the blue cycle could be unrelated to the white cycle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would have been very happy to say, "Okay, we are done with with time stories, white box." Mm -hmm. I'm essentially like American Horror Story does. Mm -hmm. This is this capsule. We're moving on. This is a new thing. We're doing it right. differently. It doesn't need to come to the same end point. Yeah. You could have just made three different endings, and depending on how it ends, that's how it ends for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was really surprised that there's no point at all in this where it's like, if, you know, in previous scenarios, you took this allegiance or this allegiance or this allegiance. Mm -hmm. um, having read up some on moving forward into obviously I'm doing way too much reading about time stories. <laughs> From what I understand, the attack on this station was either the Scion or the Eloise. Yeah, Probably the Scion because they found the location. Yeah, we got them. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, you played yourself, uh, okay. first off. Well, but that doesn't explain why a time hole is approaching, yeah. or, or what a time hole is. Yeah, Yeah, they said time hole an awful lot, but it's not been a keyword. Hey, by the way, time hole. <laughs> do, uh, do, we have, do we have an inclination of what faction uh, Mike belongs to? Mike is an anomaly, I yeah. thought. Yeah, Mike, yeah. Mike, Mike, is, Mike is. What Bob. does that mean? If yeah. Bob hadn't existed, they would have ended up with Mike. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, no, I don't think it means anything necessarily. Okay. I think it just means Mike is a thing we made up for this game because we were going to kill Bob at the end of it. Yeah. And we needed to make you feel something when that happened. And to their credit, because we've been doing a lot of dogging on this game. Mm -hmm. Uh, not Daniel, but definitely Tamara <laughs> had a reaction when you figured out that that was Bob, who did not have a head. It's pretty I, brutal. I really oh, did. Yeah, it's gross. I loved that end sequence. Mm -hmm. Like, despite how much we struggled through that game, and I wasn't particularly interested in the story that they were painting while we were playing, mm -hmm. once that end sequence came out and we were flipping over cards, man, it gave me some feels. Would you have loved it if you didn't have the code online? The what online code? Yeah, the if you, yeah. Online. Online, if you the cube unlock goes. that final Step into one. the cube and you can't solve the final puzzle. Yeah. I mean, it was the first cards that I loved. Mm -hmm. okay. It wasn't the end that I enjoyed. I don't I'm think, just wondering if yeah. that would have changed the way yeah. you felt about it. I mean, yeah, those last cards aside, you know, you see Bob, you go through, you see a couple things, you pull into the card that's just white space. Like, that was a really cool mm -hmm. change. Mm -hmm. 
visual in, in a visual effect on that sequence, and I really enjoyed that. Yeah. So I'm not going to say that just because that end wasn't necessarily rewarding in itself, that that going through that wasn't really cool. Yeah, I'll agree completely with that. I love the return to the base in this. I love that that's what the secret was. Because the whole time throughout the game, you know, we're seeing secret and like, oh, we're going to have some cool, awesome final battle, something like this. But having such a weird ending to this where the final room is just like, uh, two people fall in love and Bob, you know, <laughs> exists. And you're like, this is all about Bob? And then you go into the, the base and like, oh shit, this is really all about Bob. Yeah. Oh, he came in to save us from the problem, and now... From I, being stuck in the loop. Yeah, for some reason his head explodes. Um, I think... Time hole, time hole in his head. Time hole in his head. <laughs> I think at some point the time we had talked about whether or not there would be a time stories at the base. Yeah. Um, and whether or not that would be interesting and exciting. And we got a very brief time stories at the base, yeah. I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, but... I don't know. I, I, I feel like there was just a, a dramatic lack of um, our actions mattering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Very much so. Also, uh, we didn't get a whole lot of... We had the one alternate fantasy world, right? Yeah. With mm -hmm. dragons. And that's kind that's of it. That's it. That's it in... in uh, yeah, it's the only non-our history scenario that there was. Mm -hmm. And non-future either. Like we, we, didn't, we never hit beyond the 21st century. Oh, okay. Yeah. No... Like, the, the time stories yeah. thing is in the future, but, like, technically there is a lot of future between us and that that they could have drawn. Like, yeah, there was, there was talk about a sea lab. That's um, the, the, the first be one blue of the blue box. Cycles. Yeah, yeah. Blue box. yeah, yeah. So. the first one of the blue box is 2099. And gotcha. that will be Atlantis, not, the, not necessarily just the future. Yeah. Uh, Hadal Project is Atlantis. <laughs> And then huh. uh, Midsummer's Night is the other one, which I bet you can guess not, what that one is. Yeah. Not actual history. Um, hmm. I think probably writing themselves, like how far they want to write themselves room into the future with, with if they're doing Metasidor even in the second box, they probably don't want to box themselves in to when certain things in the future mm -hmm. happen. Because mm -hmm. it's hard to be like, oh... In 2349, we've got flying cars. Oh, dang, we wanted to do something in 2200, and, you know, we needed flying cars. Or <laughs> we wanted to do something in 2400, and we need no flying cars. <laughs> so, without having to write in some kind of calamity, they probably mm -hmm. didn't want to, like, guess. But you I mean, think like it's a time like, calamity? It could have been, like, a parallel place yeah. or something. Or, or, or like, a, uh, you're, you're yeah. on a, like, a, like the Doctor Who sanity thing, where you're in a spaceship in the middle of nowhere. And you had to save the crew, but like, you know, like big technology. Is I'm sure. Deep space nine. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the very typical like, thing that just, every, every sci-fi episode has. But yeah, just like Doctor Who. Just like Doctor Who. British shows and their holiday specials. <laughs> <sighs> what else do we want to pick apart about this? Um, oh, okay, this one had a, a few more puzzles than usual. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did so, have. Two, two puzzles. puzzles. Two puzzles. Two More puzzles. than the last few. Well, it technically had three puzzles because if you wanted to actually solve the, the final cubes. puzzle, you mm -hmm. could do it. True. You yeah. could go back. We have. Pull we on. have all the cubes. Yeah. Yeah. But we'd have we to play each individual. Time. No. <laughs> <laughs> like you, That's the rule. You could, you could technically solve that puzzle, and if you really like math puzzles, I bet that might be fun. Mm. No. Um, Thanks, okay. the internet. We, we had an actuary in our group, and he didn't feel the need to do that, so I don't know who that puzzle's for. <laughs> but there were legit puzzles, which yeah. is nice. Yeah. I guess that's, we have they been complaining about it. They weren't terribly <laughs> challenging, which I'm sure some of the puzzles have been too they were hard. Both, well, no, one of, no, they were both slightly broken, <laughs> because there was a typo on the one with the women. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yes. There's just a legitimate typo on that. And the one with the pyramid dancing is no, oh I'm thinking of the pyramid one so there were three puzzles mm -hmm. oh we did we one? did do the pyramid one no, we were we trying did. to get the guys the the together oh, yeah. Yeah. yes we did do that one oh. that was that was written ambiguously enough that it changed the outcome of it the number of time so that you number of times so there was three puzzles because we also yes. had the maze yeah. yeah yes so two of the three puzzles were written at least ambiguously enough that they could be problematic, one of them just straight wrong and one of them written <laughs> poorly, yeah. phrased mm -hmm. poorly. Um, 
I don't know if it would really matter, but it's entirely possible one time you'd have in would have changed that direction would have changed your run. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they did puzzles, but they did them not it, great. It's super surprising. Mm -hmm that nine scenarios in, we still have major typos mm -hmm. and major just translation errors. Um, and like, Which might be where more of it comes from, I guess. It's rough, and this is the kind of thing. I know that, you know, Asylum, Marcy Case, Prophecy, we're all pretty much finished around the same time, and under the master, like, we totally heard you, we're gonna do a better job on, you know, mm -hmm. clarifying this and this and this. And it really, like, honestly, I felt like under the mask was pretty dang smooth. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel a whole lot of issues with anything in that Still one. Still one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. That whole that whole middle section was really good. I think Lumen Fide was the the one that had the first like game breaking thing, where it's just straight like up left off we direction. forgot to say go to the next card. Yeah. Um. So that's not great, and I didn't like that part. Yeah. Certainly not. What was good about this one to you guys? Mm. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Other than the ending, which was Other the ending. ending. I really, ending. really, that was very cool. But you could have put that at the end of a better game or yeah. any game. You could have put that at the end of Blue and Fide or something like that. Yeah, you still could have ended that and, mm -hmm. and wrapped it in with another game. So I think the bookmarks of this game could have gone to almost anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They just made Bob important in this a little bit. You could have inserted that into almost anything. It really feels like they just, like, we knew the last one of the White Cycle has to have this in it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. What Let's can we do with here. Bob? What can we do with Bob? Yeah. But it didn't make any sense for it to be in this particular place. Right. They just had this place mostly flushed out, so, hey, we're going to end up Yeah. I mean, again, French designers, French game, and mm -hmm. I totally understand that, like... Oh, yeah. It makes perfect sense that they're going to go back into their history for their final mm -hmm. scenario. Yeah. So I'm not saying specifically, like, that is my issue right. there, because... That would be disrespectful because we have way too many games about America as it is. Yeah. But it's just like, I wish that there's been any connection other than Bob was born eventually. Like, if we ran into or, Bob or something in there. I would have also liked to be more invested in this love story. Mm -hmm. I wasn't until yeah. I realized maybe a little bit of what was happening. I could have been invested in a love story from the beginning mm -hmm. and not known yeah. what it was about at all. One question about that love story. Uh-oh. Because by the end of it, you guys knew it was the end. You, you yes. understood that you have come to the point where this thing was finally going to end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nobody seemed to have a problem, and I will say this aloud, and I think With the like, love potion date rape? Yeah, that. Yeah. Nobody had a problem with that. Does anybody have a problem with it now? <laughs> like, I get that she spills her drinks, so they don't actually they have do it. it. But you but did, try. You did put try. a love potion in someone's <laughs> drink yep. to try to get them to fall in love with you. <sighs> That's your ending. That's, yeah. that's not great. And you spent six hours trying to yep. do it, even though you didn't know. Not smooth. Yeah. Maybe not the best decision. So you asked the question, what do we like about this? And I was trying to... We're all pro Mike. I was trying to think about <laughs> <laughs> what, what really distinguishes this from previous games and previous cycles. Mm -hmm. um, and that's like... I, what, what occurred to me was that they really just doubled down on the one, the one mechanic that really ties all of time stories together, which is you learn something and you reset. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They really doubled down on that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, you have no and, time. And tied other mechanics, like having a certain number of uh, fleur de lis, yeah. into that idea of we're going to make you reset and you're going to like it and you're going to do it <laughs> ten times. Um, because you need to do this incremental change in your life. Whereas if they had adopted, for example, mechanics from um, Under the Mask, where you could get a, a fleur de lis somewhere in your third run, mm -hmm. and now you go from two to three fleur de lis on your third run, and yeah. you can enter that last place and be like, mm -hmm. dang, and save so much. Resetting. Even if they kept the discard idea, where you discard a person when you transfer out of them, mm -hmm. which I did like, it, it made you think about whether now is the important time yeah. to use that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then it just led to repetitiveness. And mm -hmm. I really liked the conceit of having a very small amount of time for the first few runs. The problem with me, and I think where it really came in, is that it didn't escalate quickly enough. Yeah. You know, if this had been if right. this had been six runs or seven runs, I would have been okay with that. It but it's 13, right? Yeah. 13, 13? And, and, 14. 14. and frankly, when we played, we stopped playing Counting. by the game. Huh. We literally said, okay, 
I'm not going to spend the five minutes to reset stuff up. Let's just swap out this card. We kept the time units the same. Yeah. We didn't overspend on each run, yeah. but we stopped resetting the um, run marker. Yeah, we just decided, you know, screw this. I'm not doing that mechanical part right. of it. Is there a redeeming point in the fact that this goes back to the original box where you see something in the first five minutes of the game that ends up being the thing you absolutely mm -hmm. need to solve the puzzle? What do you mean? In Asylum. Yeah, no, I mean, see that in this one. In the, you are told in your second location, the second location you almost have to go to. Yeah. Unless yeah. you spend forever in the forest. That you can bring three flies here and something good will happen. Oh, yeah. mm, and you right. absolutely have to do that if you'd like to win the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the same way that in an Asylum, you go into the day room and you see that painting in the front room. And if you don't look at that painting, you cannot win the game. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, is I mean I'm asking if it's redeeming in any way. It is certainly frustrating. It, so I would say, but what maybe that is true. And I'll and I'll just I guess I'll one up that a little bit to say actually in the first location in the forest you meet the most important. Okay. But you can meet her again. There's a second place to meet. That's her. true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. In the groves or yeah the groves. Mm -hmm. I would say more than anything, like, yeah, very similar kind of callback there, but at least in Asylum, they pointed, they gave you more pieces of the puzzle that was going to be something related there. This one had, I feel like, had fewer things pointing me back to flies. Sure, however, they did make it a functional thing. Mm -hmm. In Asylum, you still had to figure that out. Mm -hmm. So in this game, you could have run through 20 times and been like, okay, what's this other thing we didn't do? Let's mm -hmm. do the flies. Okay. In Asylum, you did have to pay attention and mentally figure that out. Yeah. So they did make it something where you didn't have to think as much to get to that point. Maybe. Not saying it's as rewarding, but, but there, it yeah. But was. there also were like ten different angles in this game right. because mm -hmm. you're like you're all you're told is something weird happened in Versailles. <laughs> and you come down to him and you learn there's a little love interest. There's a bigger love interest. Mm -hmm. There's a someone trying to murder somebody with poison. There's like um, there's this little combat going on in, in the Netherlands. Um, Netherlands, yeah. yeah. Um, or, or you can visit Paris. Like there were so many different disparate threads that were not tied together. Yeah. And I think in Asylum we were like it, the goal was a lot clearer to me. You know, we knew we had a sequence of five things. Mm -hmm. um, the painting had the X's on it. There's five X's. We, you know, you see the in, on the painting there. There's five numbers or something it's like, or five symbols like plus 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 minus or something like that. I don't know. I don't um, think anybody, but you saw it in our group. <laughs> yeah, um, and then also later on in that, it tells you that you have to subtract the or the last one. Mm -hmm. um, actually, if I'm thinking about it correctly, that particular sequence on the painting actually you can learn without the painting because it was told somewhere else near the end that you have to subtract the last one. Um, but they doubled down on those clues a lot more and made that sequence more obvious. Well, I, Nathan mentioned this earlier. Mm -hmm. Having, because I was the only one who was here for the full second, oh, okay. the full beta run that wasn't on beta. So there are actually a couple of mentions of the flies, but they are in the middle of different things. Uh -huh. And you have so many available options to you that it is presented as just another option. And there are also multiple thief routes, which is the mm -hmm. one thing I think that you guys as mm -hmm. well didn't check. We didn't end yeah. up doing it either. Um, but there are multiple thief routes, and there are so many other different things that are, you have going on. Oh, if you have a cross, you can do this. If yeah. you have a flower, you can do this. Mm -hmm. And there were a couple of mentions of flies. I, okay. will, I will say, having heard it a second time, there were about three of them, I want to say. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. But... It was not obvious enough that a second group playing through picked up that it was the intended route yeah. in mm -hmm. any kind of quick fashion. Yeah. Was... So the result was the same both times, even though I knew what to look for and heard it on listening to a second run through. Hmm. That's interesting. And I, one thing that I think would have pointed to it nicely is if that was the only icon that repeated. Yeah. It would have made the other icons harder to obtain mm -hmm. that we needed to get to some things, but that would have been a nice indication. We had a ton of different hearts. There were different money bags. So I thought we would be using double up of other things, yeah. not just that one. Hmm. 
Um, so if I had only seen repeats of that one, that might have been more of an indication to and, use it. And then ultimately, it is a single symbol that you need to win the game. Mm -hmm. You have to find the one person with the one symbol, right. actually two of them, yeah. um, to, to open up the last mm -hmm. portion of the game. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're, they're implying that there is value in having many of the same, but then all of the one-offs, some of those are important too. And there's, so there's, there's right. a lack of consistency in knowing which characters to select. You can't just throw out several that are maybe mechanically beneficial but not story functional. Essentially, you'd have, again, just, they're stressing the repeat. You have I to guess repeat with different combinations to try and find that sweet spot if maybe, you're going to brute force it. Maybe fewer characters would have been yeah, That would have been, been a lot better. Oh, there's yes. so nice. there's yeah. infinite characters, and by the time you need to be clear about what you're choosing, you have a giant stack that never goes away. Uh -huh. And making it almost impossible to see what's going on. And this is kind of thinking back about this whole scenario. This entire scenario makes you feel like there's multiple options, mm -hmm. but obviously there's like the two or three bottlenecks. Mm -hmm. Tying that back to Prophecy of Dragons, which actually legitimately had four different routes for the first half of the story that all led to the same midpoint. Um, you know, you could go with thieves. You can go with uh, the fairy thing. So I forget what the rest of them were, but magical fighters. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. it 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 actually had plenty of choice and plenty of different uh, different ways to get around. Mm -hmm. And then we're so trained that the system does that, and then they completely obliterated any of that in this one. Yeah. And we definitely discussed that when we were early early game. Yeah, you know, oh, there's probably a couple different ways that we could do that. And then mm -hmm. the slower the game progressed, the more we're like okay, no, there's one thing that we have to do, and then would try and think that it was this one thing, and then would do it, and it wasn't. And then you end up with another yeah, I heard you guys say that at the beginning. Oh, there's probably a couple things that I'm saying in my head. I'm like, oh, my sweet summer children. <laughs> 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 there's only one thing that you will ever do, and you're not doing it. Not right now. <laughs> uh, the correct answer is to go back to asylum, and then go out the gates, and just head to the bar and drink. <laughs> <laughs> so, y'all didn't fall into a trap that I was worried might happen. Mm -hmm. I have, from reading online, it's apparently possible to screw yourself out of so many TU by not picking up uh, time extender objects and getting yeah. demerits that you could be starting the runs with uh, one or two time. Ooh. That is apparently something that has happened to people Holy playing moly. this particular I scenario. Yeah, they were very much in the opposite. They had no demerits. They were able to get the guy that they needed from the salon before nice. mm -hmm. they yeah. were on the run that you needed to mm -hmm. have them by. And then they, like we, also already had eight TU by the time you needed to good, have eight TU by. Or I think it's seven if you're not playing with three. Because we kept thinking it was something important, I guess. Yeah. It was nice, but... Yeah. <laughs> I feel like what they took we've been? the puzzle from being an actual puzzle that is woven throughout the game, which is what it was in Asylum. You had mm -hmm. all these things and you needed to figure out what to do with them when you got there. Mm -hmm. To being the puzzle is getting to the end. Mm -hmm. Which is what... I mean, it, it is the same essential thing. In Asylum, you needed to solve that puzzle to end the game. Mm -hmm. You needed to know what to do at the pentagram. And here, you needed to know what to do. You didn't need to solve anything. You just needed to brute force your way through it. And I think they knew that people were going to do it because they put two separate mechanics in that allow you to just keep brute forcing it through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The idea that like you have infinite loops and that things persist yeah, mm -hmm. and that if you choose to take the trap door at the end, they're just like just restart and just play it again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'll probably get it this time. <laughs> so, like, they knew that that was a thing that was going to happen, and it just feels like a less fulfilling way to have the puzzle be put into the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, having all of the other ones have some sort of fail state, which again is non-canon. Like, mm -hmm. why can't this also have a fail state? So I thought of another thing that I liked about this game. Okay. Um, and I guess... So you're sent to Versailles because something is weird. And frankly, it turns out there's a lot of things that are weird. Now that Versailles, yeah. About it. Yeah. <laughs> but but it, like this is a historical moment. Like This is a pivotal time um, in French history and perhaps European history. Um, and you are rewarded for finding out that something is wrong and fixing it. Mm -hmm. and setting the course correct. Hmm. Um, maybe you're not rewarded in the way that you thought you'd be. Sure. Some of those things that you fix are weird, like giving the beggar king an artichoke. Yeah. 
<laughs> he needed it. Historic. <laughs> um, but so the one thing that you guys like earmarked at the very end to go back to Paris to go underground and mm-hmm. to uh, bring someone with a gun. Mm-hmm. Um, I looked at that card, and that card says like this is an actual cabal that actually existed in history, yeah. Yeah. and they were uh, assaulted by the police and disbanded. Yeah. Hmm. And so if you did that, it would set time in the right right direction. You didn't, so time is real messed up because those witches are still out there. Yeah, I guess that's why Bob's dead. Yeah, because the time paradox. Uh, well, that's that's, that's the thing. Like it wasn't even like oh, but we're at that end sequence. Like if yeah. you have stabilized the time to this much. You can then progress. Oh man, that'd which be, is what I was—that's ex- what, cool. what I was expecting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that'd be so. Yeah. Much. Find three events that are wrong, fix them, mm-hmm. and then something yeah. something yeah. is, I, I, is I, more I, correct. As we were getting this, like, oh, we're gonna need to fix so much before we can save Bob. Mm-hmm. But that wasn't the case. I nope. guess that would have been an interesting thing to be on one of the mission failed cards, like if you have this much at the beginning of a turn. You know, take this item or something different happens. All you get is a demerit if you don't. Yeah. 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 Okay. Reward us. Reward us for good play. Yeah. Well, in this in this case, it feels almost like it was a punishment because you guys were saying, and I watched you do it, so I know it to be true. You had tons of time left at mm-hmm. the end of your mm-hmm. later runs, where you just you didn't have anything to do with the characters that you had taken yeah. for the run. Yeah. You had done the one thing that you needed to do. You know, you take this person here get the pyramid to get the cube. Okay, yeah. well, we don't need this person anymore. Mm-hmm. But we can't... Like, switch people out. We can't switch or... people, so we're just... Having Twiddling more time buttons. is a punishment, because you're mm-hmm. just... Did we even do anything? Yeah. I think when we were running through it, we were just like, okay, we're, we're done. Yeah, Reset. we're done here. Reset. Yeah. Yeah, except all those other games are like, time is so critical that wasting time feels and runs, so bad. And runs is critical. Mm-hmm. And runs is right? critical. We, we were ecstatic to have done whatever we did in three or four runs, and, or whatever the case may be. Um, and it, it just it didn't matter. It just didn't matter at all. Like to, to, to connect those dots and to make the right decisions and places mm-hmm. to go and to maximize the last three time units by rolling a one and getting to this location and getting another item... Like, none of that mattered because they're just like, yeah, it's just reset, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, 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 did anyone do any math online about how the minimum number of runs you can actually can get to that end in? I'm sure um, somebody has, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible, I'm almost positive the answer is probably like three. Mm-hmm. Right. Wow. You I was going to guess six. Well, you need to be able to get three people with Fleur de Lis mm-hmm. to be able to get into the salon. Mm-hmm. If you start with somebody who has money, you could theoretically gamble if you roll well to get enough money to. You, well, it, it would be more than three. You need to be able to get three flies mm-hmm. and three fleur de lis. So if you get three fleur de lis, go in there, gamble from low, go to the three flies, go to Paris. You have the money that you need mm. to get into the room. Do that, bring mm. her back. And then all you need to do, well, I guess you have to have gotten Louie. You, you have need. to get Louie. You have to get the, the woman that gets you into her house for the very end. Which is, oh. which is from Louie, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, so you have to do the dance. Yes. And the dance after the dance is an entirely new thing. So I Yeah, don't. I mean, you can get the, uh, the certificate of business, though, in Paris. You can. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because those runs are so short, it would take more. But that's the, mm-hmm. sort of the problem. Because you can go to, I think it's outside the Louvre. You meet the father of Olympia, mm-hmm. 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 and if you give him her handkerchief, he will just give you a certificate of business, yeah. right? Which yes. we got yeah. on our run Well, through later it. when it didn't yeah. matter. Um, it's nice to have. So, <laughs> we sold it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you could get that then. That would get you up to get Louie, mm-hmm. and then go through the dance and get from there. I guess you would have to have picked up the guy in the groves. It's not nearly as many as it turned out to be. I don't imagine Time Stories as a game where I need a Nintendo power. <laughs> and that's what you're describing is, is, you know, yes, there is a way to do this in a probably much more enjoyable two and a half, three hours. But you never guess it. But you t- <laughs> No, and that's I mean, the Somebody might have guessed it. <laughs> How many runs did it take you guys, or did you just stop keeping track? I have no idea. Yeah. Somewhere north of 10. Uh, yeah, yeah we, we did just stop keeping yeah. track. Mm-hmm. Um, I know for a fact Jake had checked out well before that point. Yeah. Um, 
and we were we made the error of playing this after work on a weeknight, so <laughs> everybody was a little punchy. Mm -hmm. um, and I would not be surprised if at least one or two of the rest of us were not paying attention to half of what was going on. Uh, we were just, you know, we need to go here. Okay, we go here, we do this thing, start again. Um, <laughs> it, I was glad that we took a break. Mm -hmm. I know we were still accelerated, but... You guys played one to six, thereabouts? Not quite to six, but yeah. yeah. They started at noon, and we took about a half hour, 45 minute break. In the middle. It mm -hmm. was probably about five hours of playtime, yeah. if that. But mm -hmm. still, enough that you got to a point where you were starting to speed through things and not mm -hmm. reading cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we placed yeah. people at locations, and then we picked up all the cards, and we're like, we literally did all of this wrong. Yeah. Because we weren't trying, we were just like, whatever, you go there. Yeah. So then we were like, I was just like, this is not, we're going to keep doing this. We just missed the only thing we were here to do. <laughs> Let's take a break. Like this whole run was based off this one location and then we all went to the wrong spot. <laughs> and we played basically 7 to 1.30. <gasps> Something like that, yeah. Yeah, Something it was like brutal. Because this one didn't sound like it was supposed to be this long. Yeah. <laughs> and I think a lot of the, the length of this was just the just poor flow. It's, mm -hmm. It flows poorly, and with a game that was reliant on story beats so much, they just forgot to play the beats. I almost feel like I would have also preferred fewer locations. I think we would have been able to keep better track of what was where, and mm -hmm. yeah. twice we thought a person was in a place... And we went to the wrong place. That's a, yeah, that's a common time sort of thing for us. We keep, we always do but that. You usually but usually have thirty-five times to do it. That's fair enough. Yeah. 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 And so on this one, there were a lot of locations that. I mean, I feel like some of the mechanics, again, like we said, if you took away people, mm -hmm. could have been condensed into fewer locations and had similar. And things and flavors happening. And it's something that was so rewarding for going down the cul-de-sac, getting your fetch and coming back. Yeah. I think it's a big yeah. thing. I got, there was so many branches, but they all felt like dead ends and like, yeah. more yeah. so than cul-de-sac. Like we didn't, we weren't rewarded for exploring France. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I much more enjoyed like in uh, Asylum the one giant detour red herring. <laughs> you know, you don't yeah, like, going core. through all those tunnels. Like, that felt exciting. That yeah. was an exciting, like, nope, totally gotcha. And as then we to, did, I mean, that's been a joke this whole time. Yeah, yeah. Like, we still think that that's funny. It didn't ruin our game. Yeah, it was like, amusing. Think of a single branch that stood out in any of that. Mm -hmm. that even get close to that. Did anyone else really appreciate the callback to the plunger on the last? Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> the base, see the it. return to the base is covered Scott, in little hints to everything. To each of them. Oh. Yeah, there's there's pieces well, there's to every one. single okay. uh, scenario in there somewhere. Oh, all right, that's kind of cool. Oh, I did not notice that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of cool little stuff was, there. It makes this like this last little bit so cool. That's even better. Yeah, but, so yeah. Again, the return to the base, like oh, this, the real important key is great. Yeah. <laughs> that key that did everything. But literally anything outside of that, either before or once you go in that damn cube in the middle, <laughs> like yeah. just that one room, I love it. <sighs> like honestly, I would almost love to just see them come back to this and be like, okay, we got you. This is actually the first game to the, the blue set, yeah. here is your end to the white that will actually take you down the other paths and everything. I'd be fine. So you want to wreck <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, unfortunately, they've already started printing the new stuff, so. <laughs> so, yeah. speaking of new stuff, um, so here's what I know about the blue cycle so far. We're going to get two scenarios on launch. Mm -hmm. They are not required to be played in an order. As I understand it, there is a additional part to the blue cycle called Time Stories Experience mm -hmm. that allows you to develop your time agent through the blue cycle. Okay. That's cool. Is okay. anyone interested in this? Danielle cringed immediately. Hard no. Okay. It's, it's an RPG? I mean, yeah, essentially. Just basically, you're like maybe like Ryan Lockett level upgrading. When we first started, we kind of did play the characters more, mm -hmm. or the people that we were in that time. Mm -hmm. yeah as if we were those characters a little bit. And we didn't fall out of that, but mm. yeah. I feel like we would make that persist if that were the case. Mm. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing on these cards, Dan? That's a reel-to-reel -reel tape. That's yeah, the yeah. goblet from the front of this box. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah. I would be interested in that. That's from. Um, yeah, I think that's I would be, definitely be up for trying. I would be invested in that person. I think it's a fine idea. Oh, change the flavor, especially if I'm not getting the the storyline flavor connection. Yeah. That that gives a little bit of something. Yeah. Um, what was with mechanics? So mechanics, they're obviously taking out the dice, they're taking out the tokens. The base box is no longer necessary yeah. for Blue Cycle. They're all going to be their own self-contained things. I kind of get the sense that they're trying to make it this with unlock in a way, mm -hmm. but not like, you know, unlock, timer, buzzers, codes, puzzles, app integrated, like stuff like that, but like halfway between where most of what you're doing is on the cards and you're just, you know, figuring out your stuff that way. I'm really hoping that it means that there's going to be more puzzle and more of that kind of stuff mm -hmm. involved in that, unless rolling dice that uh, you don't need anymore. <laughs> Why would they give us the really nice token set before the last scenario? Gotcha. Because they got your mind. <laughs> They're also... They are really nice. Yeah. They are. Mm -hmm. Think of the things you could use them for later. Yeah. Uh, nothing. Uh, rolling one die to I mean, change can, uh, anything later. You can use later. them to play yeah. under the mask a second time, so you can get that second thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can take the little ones and, and play all the time stores again, so you can actually collect all of the cubes. Yep. Um, so that's what I know about Blue Cycle. Uh, I'm guessing... I mean, just from what I understand about the way that this one ends... It's like an unstuck in time quantum leap kind of thing that happens to us from here. Oh. And that's why the boxes are unrelated. But you will be able to have a meta story, but it won't be in those base boxes. So the blue yeah. stories can just be the blue stories. And then Time Stories Experience, addition to it, will give you the meta story mm -hmm. optionally. So yeah. I'm a big meta story guy. And Danielle, I know you are not. I don't have time. <laughs> <sighs> So yeah, maybe we'll uh, shuffle teams up if we do this blue thing. And then you can be the no meta, and I can be the yes meta. What? <laughs> I don't know what you I thought I you mean. guys stopped that. <laughs> I definitely dropped an F-bomb in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to do the meta. <sighs> well, um, I'm not going to make room on our calendar to have two different groups mm -hmm. from our house. Uh, <laughs> anybody have any other thoughts on this or Time Stories as a whole? I feel like this is the this is probably the last time we're going to do one of these in their current form because right. we don't know how the blue is going to work yet. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. How do you feel about the white cycle overall? What were the high points? What were the horrendous low points. Most of the games were pretty rewarding. Yeah. Even when we struggled with Dragon, and we struggled, yeah. it still <laughs> ended up pretty cool. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's probably yeah. favorites of some of y'all, yeah. not there, me, but... There was definitely a point in like that one specifically, and in the other ones, where the end of the game made it worth whatever you went mm -hmm. through to get there. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciated that. And Dragon's also one we tried on like a weekday night. No, so. Dragon's no, was a weekend. You guys took yeah, seven and a half hours. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Marcy, Asylum, I think those are the only ones we ever did on a weekday. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it, Dragon's my, was the one we played at your yeah. old house. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, up to the finale, yeah. um, I really enjoyed all the little meta tid tidbits. Like they were yeah. exciting to find, they were like Easter egg-y, and that was yeah. amazing. But ultimately, they didn't accumulate everything, which just let me know. I really like, hate oh. just the drop. That just the they dropped the references to our that meta plot that we've been going through for so long, yeah. and they dropped probably, the references to cocaine too. Yeah, there were <laughs> that'll some... probably come back up in the uh, favor release. You know, the online things more like right. oh, here's when the Scions invaded the base and shot the shit out of Bob. Hmm. I enjoyed the, the breaking of the fourth wall a little bit. Or, I should say break, maybe that's the third wall. When, Whoa. like, uh, other agents from the future showed up in, yeah. in mm -hmm. Marcy case yeah. or something, yeah. and it was like, oh wait, what? Oh, that's right, we are we are time agents, we're not just in the scenario. Like, hmm. It brings you back to kind of bridge that gap a little bit. Or you see an anachronism in the card, and you're like, why is there a, why is this here? That shouldn't be. Yeah. Here. Or they do fun little stuff, like push a big red button of yeah. um, in the game, in Marcy case, and we push that to zombies attack. That was that was great. <laughs> there were silly things in a lot of the other games mm -hmm. um, that That's were so silly. dumb, and it very enjoyable for our group. Yeah. Um, even though they were 
clearly dead ends. <laughs> um, yeah. I almost wish that these dead ends might have been more fun. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I would have been fine with a more like more of the dead ends, but again, they weren't rewarding dead ends either as stuff in game or like amusing. This was an amusing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're really there. There is no fun moments in this mm-hmm. in Madame. Um, I would argue that when you give the King of Beggars an artichoke, that was okay. Fun. <laughs> we did, but we did find that amusing. At that point, you're so into the thing that you're supposed to be doing because that's also the only place in the game you need to go at that point. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's not at a point where you're ready for a fun thing that totally just happened. It's at a point where you're like, I need to find a damn witch. Yes. <laughs> I mean, Nathan. I think Nathan enjoyed the bit where he saved those sheep and then realized it was a metaphor. <laughs> yes, that, that was that was enjoyable. Yeah. Oh, but again, also at that same yeah. end point where like, like the pl- we hit the plunger rather early in Asylum, and that was fun because of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, we just wasted six time, but you know what? It was worth it. I mean, it, it, it laid the groundwork for the way that the the system would play with us throughout the entire thing. It's like, sure. hey, we're gonna throw some curveballs at you, and it's gonna be kind of goofy and fun. And every now and then you'll you'll do something completely horribly wrong, but at least we're gonna you know give you a laugh about it. Right. And then they just forgot to do any of that, and then loaded this one with way too many of those uh, stub toes. So I know the answer to this for Jake and anybody who's listened to our top ten games. So <laughs> knows the answer. For right. You. We were told not uh, we were not allowed. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's because of probably what I'm about to say. Mm-hmm. There's a shark somewhere here. I know for Jake it is after Lunar oh. Day. Yes. Does anybody else have an opinion on where the shark is for Time Stories? Or is there a shark? Am I wrong? What's a, what, what's a shark? Did oh, it, a shark. Where did, where did it jump? Jumps the shark? Yes. What's the peak? Um, gotcha. Actually, I'd probably agree with Lumen Fide. That was that that was when it started. Like the story, overarching story, was at its peak for me. So I really appreciated that. And then it was. I would have figured you guys would have said the pirates one. Hmm. We were already oh, displeased oh, by the yeah. Pirates one. Fair yeah. Um, because I, I believe Estrella Drive is the one between yes. you know, yeah. Luna Fide and Pirates, and I very much disliked Estrella Drive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I you guess, haven't been happy for a while. I guess that was Pete, because we, we were here, mm-hmm. and uh, I think people were yelling outside because we were doing yes. stuff. But and we were screaming inside because we were doing stuff, mm-hmm. and it was ridiculous that we were making these decisions, and we felt like we couldn't. But it was exhilarating at the same time that we had to make a decision because we thought it mattered. Yeah, yeah. giving the fire lady the, the, the mm-hmm. thing was that was, that so was, that was, that was a great moment. That was <laughs> definitely the the last best game that we had because of those moments. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Dan? Uh, that's that's a fair assessment. I mean, certainly there was uh, a valley in my mind with, um, what's it called, Expedition Endurance. Mm-hmm. But Lumen Fide brought that even even with its flaw, mm-hmm. its sizable, glaring flaw. Um, you know, brought back that intensity of of making decisions that didn't really matter, but you thought that they mattered, and so it was fun, at least in the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, while you bring up Expedition Endurance, I actually should ask this. Have we ever really talked about Danielle's persistent condition that she picked up in Expedition Endurance? We have Endurance? no idea what no. happened in okay. that game. So, in Expedition Endurance, <laughs> oh, wait. Um, in the pyramid, Danielle died. <laughs> Danielle's character falls off the edge mm-hmm. and dies, and it sends her to the location 666. Yeah, yeah, which was just a bunch of psychedelic artwork and, mm-hmm. like, Cthulhu-type beings. Yeah. And I see this, like, crazy thing that's going on, and my character, for the rest of the scenarios, had... Well, A, I knew that, that we were supposed to be collecting cubes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I had verification of that. Um, so that was your reward. That was my reward. My other thing was that all of my vessels had one more strength, hmm. but one less health. Yeah, yeah. overall okay. health. So I was limited on who I could be because some of my vessels would have died immediately. Right. Um, that would have been fine. But they had a dick. Daniel would have loved that. <laughs> they could punch harder, but died quicker. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, which is great because I wasn't playing the punching people in our group. Yeah. yeah. Um, but. It did mean that anybody who had a one on their mm-hmm. on their persistence was off the table for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
And Dan also picked up Green Spongy yeah. in that Somebody one. Somebody in your group had Green Spongy, right? Mm-hmm. What was that? For real? I thought You're just obsessed like with green, green stuff. It, 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 yeah, just implied that you had an affinity for things that were green. Mm-hmm. Do I Especially know what that is? slimy things. No. Cool. <laughs> yeah. But it didn't I give think, you a thing so to do? So the only thing that matters is at the end of Asylum, when you're in the final cave, there's a room with a green slime in it. And it says if you have item two, you get a benefit of some sort. I think mm-hmm. like you you at get the end of what at the what did I say? Oh, at the end of endurance. At the end of endurance, you said aside. Okay, no, at the end of at the end, at the end of endurance. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Um, you're in the final game, and there there is like a, a, a chamber of green goo. If you go there and you have already experienced the goo, um, you get rewarded with some big strength boost. I would assume that would have an effect in pirate one as well, because the one guy is encased in green goo. We mm-hmm. just went to it in the complete wrong order. Yeah. For it to there, matter. There's, you know, there was no there's no explicit mechanical benefit, but I, it was, I guess, you were supposed to be encouraged to touch things that are green, so you would then interact with that card. But you had to know well, that it was there. We had to go there before 90% through the game. Yeah. yeah. And also... Sorry. Uh, um... I was about to say, and also, oh, the green goo is in some way tied to the time transfer process. Yeah, came up, was that in this one? Or oh, no. maybe it was like an interlude or something in that they talk about. Something it. else yeah. where they talked about it. I think it was in one of their. Yeah. This is a good, yeah. little short. Yeah, yeah, this is an audio notes. medium, Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to process yeah, it. Yeah, it's one of the, the online yeah. debriefings. It's like, there's been a buildup of that freaking transfer yeah, gel. I think Bob's like, oh, so much goo. Oh. Hmm. Uh, not exactly the goo. Like. Yeah. I didn't really know Bob. Uh. Mm. Well, now you won't. Yeah. No, no it's we'll worry. At the end of Blue time. Cycle, we'll travel back in time and save Bob with a drink. Man, they're going to do that, aren't they? <laughs> no, yeah, we've got to get our Bob back. <laughs> Since it's all um, the Blue Cycles, well, that's, get that's Bob, Bob from a different dimension, though. So. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay. Dimensional that's, Bobs. That's a version of Ten Power. Now, do we end up with in Blue Cycle with Bob or Mike? We don't end up with anything. Well, no, no, the base uh, is destroyed. We, we, we fixed Mike's out the there. timelines, and Mike doesn't exist anymore. Yay. They're and, both gone. And then Mike Bob died. At, so we brought Bob back just for him to die. So yeah. now they're both gone. But I he lived would, a good life. I would be very surprised if Bob were in the next cycle. Because uh-huh. so many people who played this game disliked Bob so much. I mean, we oh, love to hate Bob, Bob, though. <laughs> yeah, but there are people who played this that just hated to hate oh, Bob. No. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> Do you hate Bob that much? No, I like oh, okay. Bob. Yeah. I, I've actually always liked Bob. Bob's a cool... He's a cool character. He's a well-developed character, especially if you read the, the tertiary stuff on the website. Like, it's a, it's a really interesting character that they just didn't bother to really, you know, give you info on if you don't work for it. Yeah, I have a, I have a feeling, like, if you go back and listen to the Boards of Live stuff when they still played Time Stories, <laughs> they didn't like Bob. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think it was a love-to-hate Bob type of thing. I think it was a we-do-not-like-this type of thing. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, they did do a good job giving him a lot of personality. The fact that you only had, like, two cards of information on every game. Yeah. I mean, enough for me to continually put weird references in the podcast with Bob. Bob <laughs> does show, the Bob character does show up in uh, our top games list. Nice. Which is the other reason I didn't want you to listen to that before this, because uh, I don't spoil it, but I do Bob goes in to save our timeline. Mm-hmm. Which is an homage, obviously, to this. Yeah. So, sorry we killed Bob on our, on our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> You're the reason. That's you were We're the, the time hole. Yes. We were the time hole all along. Yeah. Actually, that's why uh, the the uh, the Asians suck. I, I, I figured we caused all this mess. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> but yeah, it was it, it was a very fun experience. Um, very happy to have y'all be our alpha. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Our group was great. Albeit eccentric and impulsive. <laughs> They make great silence. <laughs> At least you didn't side with the the oh, little either. girl in the silo. Oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> correct. Oh, she she was topless. How could you verse? <laughs> oh, Tia. <yeah. laughs> <laughs> we barely knew ye. <sighs> so is that it? Close the the case homes one final time. How am I supposed to say that word? You can't say the word because I've been saying cashins. It's, it's <laughs> impronounceable to your human tongue. <laughs> it's probably case homes. Case homes. I don't know. Croissants. Close. Yeah, close the croissants. Hey, yeah. let's bake the croissants one final time <laughs> on Time Stories and uh, signing off. Yeah. Yeah. Beep boop. Beep boop. Yep. Doop. Um. Boop.
Draft Mechanic Spoiler Episode Omega was recorded at some point in time. When doesn't matter. But we'll see you next mission. DraftMechanic.net. Draft Mechanic.